All right, let's stand for our call to order. We thank God for this opportunity to worship this day. May God continue to bless the ministries of this church. We thank God for the legacy of our church founders. May God continue to bless the ministries of this church. We thank God for God's presence with us this day. May God continue to bless the ministries of this church. Let us worship God. Let's remain standing and sing our opening hymn, which is Spirit of the Living God, found on page 389. <clears throat> Uh, the first verse of that 
uh, of Hebrews is talking about faith, and it says, by faith, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. And the entire, then, all of, of chapter 11 of Hebrews talks about faith and talks about a lot of these great heroes of faith. So this is sort of skipped now down to, it's gone through Jacob and Joseph and Moses and all these other people, and we're picking up here um, with uh, the, the parting of the Red Sea, and it's going to be talking about faith, and goes through the first two verses of chapter 12 of Hebrews. So listen now to this one. By faith, the people crossed the Red Sea as if on dry land. But the Egyptians, when they attempted to do the same, were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the harlot did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had given friendly welcome to the spies. And what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, of Barak, of Samson, of Zephthah, of David, and Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, received promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to fly. Women received their dead by resurrection. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and scourging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. They were killed with the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, ill-treated, of whom the world was not worthy wandering over deserts and mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And all of these, though well attested by their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had foreseen something better for us, that apart from us, they should not be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. This is the word of the Lord. Now, you guys, I think most of you realize that I work on my messages in advance. And um, um, this one, I try to work usually three or four weeks in advance, at least, maybe not the entire message, but at least the general idea and the theme and what scriptures I'm going to use and come up with a, with a title for the message and everything. So it was actually three or four weeks ago that I came up with the title for this message. Um, I didn't realize what it was going to look like today. Uh, so the great cloud really has nothing to do with all the rain that's taking place right now. It's, uh, you know, that, that's not what the, where, where the title is going to come. So uh, I just wanted to clarify that and make sure that, that you realize that. Uh, you know, we really didn't have to have a bulletin this morning because I figured, you know, I was hoping for double digits, like I said. That's, that's a regular remark. But uh, this was Joan's first Sunday to do the bulletin, so you know, I wanted to make sure that she had something to do. So uh, we put a bulletin together. And several things are out of the bulletin today, but uh, I think we'll, we'll get the gist of a service in. Uh, the Great Cloud, the scripture from Hebrews, is, is one of my, I, got, I guess I have a lot of favorite scriptures, uh, but, but this is one of them that I think is a, one of the great scriptures of Hebrews. This, this whole statement, and one of the reasons it affects me so much, I think, is because the church that I was, that Julia and I and my family, my kids were members of in Fulton, Missouri, uh, for almost 20 years, uh, the First Presbyterian Church there. They had one of the one of the founders of that church, one of the original men that helped start that particular church. He wrote a book about it, um, and about the founding of that church and the history of the church and whatever. And the book was published because he was actually a printer and he could print his own book. So he did. And uh, 
he, he was a, uh, had written this, and he entitled the book This Great Cloud of Witnesses. And it was talking about you know, the, the legacy and the heritage of that particular church. And, and that book had an impact on me because I, you know, every church that I've been associated with, with since then, I try to appreciate the people, the legacy of that particular church. And this church certainly is no exception. Um, and all of you know a lot more about the legacy of this church than I do. Uh, but uh, there's a reason that we're here. Um, and it's not just because we decided to come here this morning. You know, we, we have this legacy of people that have come before us that established this church in this place, in this town, over 100 years ago. And, uh, you know, we're a part of that legacy, that ongoing legacy. So, uh, the great cloud of witnesses continues even here this morning. You know, just look around this morning. All, this, all the people that you see that you're rubbing shoulders with, this is pretty amazing. Almost everybody's rubbing, can almost rub shoulders to me. Except Sandy, because she has to be... Are you official back there? I is think that, I am. Yeah, here's your official. She's the official deacon, so she has, she has to sit in the back, I guess. But anyway, uh, you know, and I think, I really think that we need to appreciate every Sunday when we come in here what a privilege it is that we get to come in here and we get to be a continuing part of the legacy of First Presbyterian Church here in St. Joseph. And we continue that legacy with the work that continues here, with the ministry that continues here. So there is a great cloud of witnesses, not just from the Bible, of witnesses of faith that we can read their stories about, but there's a great cloud of witnesses to the legacy of this specific church. And we are continuing to be a part of that cloud today as well. Let us pray. Gracious God, may the words of my lips and the meditations of our hearts and minds be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. So the scripture reading this morning reminds me that there is this great crowd, crowd, cloud, or crowd, but this great cloud of witnesses that surrounds us. People of faith such as David and Joshua and Rahab and Samuel were mentioned in our reading this morning. Uh, you know, their stories that we can read throughout the Bible remind us of their commitment to faith and challenge us, you know, in our faith. And hey, are we that committed? Through all types of situations and circumstances. And you know, we're reminded of the many trials and the hardships that these people dealt with throughout their, their lives. And I think as we're reminded of that, how can we not appreciate the situation that we're in today? Because we're not facing all the things that they face in their day. Sure, there are things that we have to deal with, but you know, uh, they were people just like us. And they had their faults, they had their problems, um, but they faced a lot of things, a lot more difficult things than most of us have to face. Um, but they persevered. They held on to their faith. Um, and it's not just the great people of the Bible. You know, it's also the people that are the witnesses to us that are the legacy of this particular church. And, you know, I don't know most of the names. Some of you know some of the names. Some of you know a lot more of the names than, than others. But... Uh, you know, there have been a lot of people that were instrumental in this church now being here and, and serving as a ministry to this particular community. Uh, those first women that formed that Sunday school in 1902 or whatever it was, you know, they got, got things started. It was really the, the beginnings of this church. And then the hundreds and hundreds of people after them who continued to work in this church on behalf of this church, on behalf of God and God's ministry here in St. Genevieve, that continued the ministry since 1902 up through 2016, um, all the things that have taken place as a result of this church being here. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty amazing to think about. Um, so all those people that are a legacy of this church are a part of our great cloud of witnesses as well. Uh, all those people that worked here since 1902. All those people that uh, made this, this ministry into a ministry of God right here. Um, you know, that's something to, to be proud of. It's something to, to be glad that we have that opportunity to continue to be a part of uh, right here. And I think that's really what being in worship is all about. 
on Sunday mornings. Whether there's 11 of us here or whether there's 111 of us here, you know, it's realizing that we are a part of God's kingdom and that we have a place in God's kingdom. Uh, each and every one of us have a place in God's kingdom. So, the scripture goes on after it talks about all these great people of faith and it goes into Hebrews 12 and the author of Hebrews challenges us. He was challenging his people that he was speaking to back then, but it's also challenging us today to lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely that we may run with perseverance. Well, how do we lay aside weights? How do we lay aside our sins so that we can do what we're supposed to be doing? Well, we can't do it by ourselves. We can't do it by ourselves. Now, there are not many of us here this morning. There are only 11 of us, but we're not here by ourselves. You know, uh, we can depend on every, every, on each other. You know, that's what's so precious about this very moment, about being here right now with only the 11 of us that are sitting here in this place. There are still 11 of us, and we're here to support each other. We're here to encourage each other. We're here to serve as a part of that great cloud for each other, the witnesses to faith. We're here to share with each other in running this race that the author of Hebrews talks about. Now, some of us may not be runners, so this race analogy doesn't apply to us too much. I don't know. Some of you are runners. But me, you know, I only run when something big and mean is chasing after me. So, you know, I, I, I'm not a runner at all. Never have been, uh, never will be. Uh, I, I, I've told this story before, but I wanted to just mention it again. It's not very long ago. But it was a few years ago, it was actually seven years ago, that my wife Julia decided she was going to complete a marathon. The year before, she had um, done a half marathon, 13.1 miles. But she decided, well, she's going to challenge herself and she's going to do a complete marathon, 26.2 miles. So she signed up for the St. Louis Marathon. Uh, it was like I said, this was seven years ago. And she signed up like months in advance. So you guys, you got to prepare yourself. Now, Joy is not a runner either. She's a walker, and now she's primarily a biker. Now she's a kayaker. That's what she likes to do. But anyway, uh, she's always doing something. So she wasn't a runner, but she was a walker. And so she was going to walk the entire marathon, which she can walk really fast. I, I have long legs. But she can walk me down in just no time. I mean, it's just zoom. You know? But anyway, so she's going to walk the marathon, and so she's got to train for it. And I mean, she, you know, got to get ready. You don't just go out and walk 26 miles, and, you know, uh, not in a short of time as she did anything. But anyway, uh, she went, she trained, and she worked, and she walked. And there was this whole regime that you were supposed to go through for months, like three or four months of, of how you're supposed to prepare yourself for a marathon, you know, how to do that, you know, when you're supposed to, you know, it, it tells you how many miles you're supposed to go, and you know, how you're supposed to build up to a certain uh, extent. And I don't think, I don't think it, in her regime anyway, she never got to 26 miles in a day. I think maybe 20 might have been top or something it's like that. It's 20 because it's so hard to drive. Yeah, right. So you don't ever actually do all, the whole marathon thing, but you get close. And I mean, you're working toward that and doing that, you know, for, for months in advance. And she prepared and she was getting herself ready. And finally, finally, the big day came. At this point, we were living in Fulton, Missouri, and the marathon is in, in St. Louis. And it starts at like 8 o'clock in the morning, maybe earlier than that. I don't know. It's early. But so we actually, you know, we reserved a, a, a hotel room and everything in St. Louis and came over from Fulton. So, you know, she'd be ready. We wouldn't have to make the drive in the morning before the marathon. Finally, the big day came. We came into the marathon. And of course, I came with her. I was a support person. I was not in the marathon, of course. I was just, you know, knew all these checkpoints that I was going to go and see how she was doing, you know, and whatever. Uh, that's, that's what I did. That's sort of been my role throughout my life with my wife. I just support what she does. And, but whatever. So we went to this marathon, and I was amazed. It was the first time I'd ever actually been physically present at a marathon. Uh, and when I got there on Saturday morning, and they were getting ready for the marathon and whatever, I was totally amazed by the fact that there were 5, 10, 15, 20 times as many people there in support of the marathon as there were people who were actually in the marathon. 
I mean, there were thousands and thousands and thousands of people in downtown St. Louis. And a few of them had on their marathon shirts and numbers and all that stuff and were getting out in the street to start the race. But the rest of us, I mean, it was a huge crowd of people. I mean, and those people were there to support and to encourage the people that were running the marathon, that were running the race. And as I thought about it and, and continued to think, you know, how, how amazing this is that all these people were here, I realized that there were thousands and thousands and thousands of more people that were not physically present at that marathon in St. Louis on that day, but friends and relatives of those people that were running in the marathon that had supported them and encouraged them and, and were thinking about them and that were praying for them and that were hoping the best for them. And I was thinking, I thought right back to this verse from Hebrews, that great cloud of witnesses. And it really came home to me at that particular marathon when we were there, you know, what that meant to realize well, yeah, there's people that are running the race that are going to be directly involved with it today. But, oh my gosh, there's so many more people that, are, that had to support them and encourage them, or this is never going to take place. You know, this race is not going to happen. These people are not going to, we're not being able to make this particular race. And I really thought about this scripture and once again went back to that whole idea of it does take a tremendous amount of support really for us to do anything you know we don't we're not in this by ourselves in this life by ourselves um, as christians we are called to run the race that christ has set before us but we're not called to run it alone we have so many people to encourage us we have the stories of faith to encourage us we have the legacy of the people for the last 114 years that were a part of this church to encourage us and to support us. And we have the people that are presently members of this church and friends of this church that continue to support us uh, here as we support each other. You know, um, and then there are, there are Christians all around the world, people that we'll never know, that we'll never meet, that we'll never be in association with, that pray for us. It, just as we pray for others around the world that we'll never know, they'll never know us, they'll never see us. Uh, there is a great cloud of witnesses to the love of God, uh, to the redemption to, uh, through Jesus Christ um, that we'll never know about, but that support us, that are encouraging us. And by the way, I, I, I think I've told you this story before, but Julia did complete the marathon, well, 26.2 miles of it. She was exhausted at the end, but exhilarated. I, you know, she didn't care what her time was, but I don't remember what it was. It was, it was in between five and six hours that it took her to walk 26 miles. You know, uh, that's a pretty darn good, good pace. But uh, I, I, uh, I was there to support her. Um, but uh, it, it was an amazing thing that she, she was able to do that. Um, There were so many people in that crowd, this great crowd of others, who were witnesses to what was going on, uh, who had encouraged and assisted those participants in many ways throughout their preparations for the marathon. I was just one of them. And when this passage from Hebrews came to my mind, I realized that, you know, that's what it's all about as Christians. And we don't, we don't want to forget that. We want to remember that we're here to support and encourage each other. And we don't want to be shy about doing that. You know? Uh, when somebody does a good job, when somebody does a job, any job, yeah, on behalf of the ministry of this church, we need to encourage that. You know, we need to continue to encourage that because that's what we're called to do. Uh, you know, because today, you and I, and all Christians everywhere, we're running this race uh, to try to follow Jesus. And it's not easy. Matter of fact, it's quite often difficult to do. Uh, it means sacrifice, it means effort, it means time, it means patience. But we're surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses for support. We're not in it by ourselves. And we're comforted by the example of Jesus to follow uh, throughout our lives. And, and thank be to God, we don't have to face the kinds of trials that Jesus had to face as we're called to follow and walk in His way. Christ suffered even unto death on that cross so that we could live. So we are challenged to live today, 
to run this race so that Christ's death has not been in vain. And that's what all, every single member of our great cloud of witnesses encourages us to do, to follow Christ, to follow Him, to witness to God's love, and to continue the ministry of God right here, right in this place. First Presbyterian Church, St. Timothy. Thanks be to God. In response to our message this morning, we are going to join together in our affirmation of faith, which you find printed in your bulletin, but which is the Apostles' Creed, which most of you probably can do from memory anyway. So either pick up your bulletin or just do it from memory, and we are going to share together the affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. Please join me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He descended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand God the Father Almighty, from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now, such as we are, we still will look at our offerings this morning. So as Cindy shares some music with us this morning, be generous as Sandy or Richard or whoever comes forward with the play. many needs to be met, 
as people cry out from all areas of this earth, we know that their only hope, just as our only hope, is in You. May Your love descend upon all those who may be sick, those who may be struggling, those who may live in strife and turmoil. May Your peace be with them and comfort them, if only for a brief moment. We ask that you continue to be with us now as we repeat the prayer Jesus told us. Say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, Let us rise one last time and sing our closing hymn, Take the Name of Jesus with You, which is number 235. <laughs>